and Microsoft join hands on ICT skill development. Ethiopian innovator builds solid houses from recycled plastic bottles. Hello and many thanks for joining us. I'm Tabitha John. This is the news from ABC. President Mulatu Teshoma has conferred with the United Nations General Assembly President Miroslav Lajak on the priority areas of the UN. During their meeting, Lajak praised Ethiopia for supporting UN agendas, especially in global peace efforts and to maintain security. Particularly, he mentioned Ethiopia's active role in providing peacekeepers as exemplary. The two parties discussed on financing young people and the reform process taking place at the United Nations, including reforms in the UN Security Council. President Mulatu Teshoma reaffirmed that Ethiopia will continue supporting UN agendas. Hosting the largest refugee population is an indication of the country's commitment, President Mulatu underlined. Foreign ministers of the United Arab Emirates and Russia are due to visit Ethiopia next week, according to Foreign Ministry spokesperson Meles Alem. The visit aims at strengthening the bilateral cooperation between the respective countries. In his weekly briefing to local journalists on Thursday, Meles said Ethiopia has had first-class ties with both the UAE and Russia and would like to boost it. Accordingly, UAE Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed, on his visit from March 5 to 7, will confer with his Ethiopian counterpart, Dr. Warkanah Gabayo. The UAE is one of the Gulf countries with whom Ethiopia has a strong cooperation. They have great participation in trade and investment. Thus, the foreign minister's visit will serve as an impetus to further enhance the excellent bilateral ties of the two nations. Similarly, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov's visit will reinforce the 120 old cordial bilateral relationships. The effective implementation of the agreements signed between the two nations will also be reviewed during the visit. Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov will visit Ethiopia on March 8 and 9. Lavrov is due to hold talks with his Ethiopian counterpart and other high-ranking government officials on bilateral and multilateral issues. Residents of Addis Ababa urged Parliament to pass decisions which strengthen the unity among people and embrace peace in the country. The Parliament is anticipated to convene tomorrow for emergency meeting and pass resolution on pertinent issues of the country. The resignation of the Prime Minister and the state of emergency declared by Council of Ministers are among the top agendas. Hence, people asked its representatives to be intent in passing resolution and bring back the peace and unity of the country. Let's hear some of the views. We need unified, loving and peaceful Ethiopia. We Ethiopians should come together and work to get rid of poverty without dividing ourselves in different ethnicities. So we request the parliament to pass resolutions which upload those values. We need what is good for the country. Whatever the decision is, we want something that can settle the current situation. We accept the Parliament's decision. Above all, we need peace and public yearn for peace and expect the Parliament's decision to bring peace. We expect the decision to support previous efforts to bring peace and complete serenity to the country. What we value above all the election, decision or political activities is whether they bring peace. We need to work and live peacefully. I expect a decision which benefits the country and the people. 
We weren't like this before. We really need our peace back. Afan Oromo, ETV Afan Otarat, you want to know Ega? Television Conquat, Grinia, Pop and Quatat, ETV, Up Carabao. ETV Fit, Afarafal, Dutu, Nia Ambala. You want to have Somalia in the Wanton, Mokadaha, ETV. English transmission on ETV Language. Coming soon. Ah, Ambala, 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 Welcome back, you're watching ABC News. Wera Ilu is a place where all Ethiopians gathered to rally against colonial aggression. Elders from Wera Ilu urged people to keep alive Ethiopians' ancient sense of togetherness. Kifleye Susabebe. <laughs> In the 1896, this very place was Railu, where Ethiopian patriots across all corners of the country met and rallied against colonial aggression. Emperor Menelik announced the march will be on October. He called on people to join him in fighting or contribute for the battle with their resource, labor, or prayers. But he also wanted those who stay behind. Thus, on his direction, all the people by their respective leaders gathered at this place. The first to arrive here was the Rasma Kona led Harari Battalion. The Rasma Ngesha, Raswale, Vitarari Gabayo, and others joining afterwards. Then Emperor came on December. This place is where Imperial Melilik II had his announcement. Before Arua battle, in this guest of St. George Church, Kings of the time have also discussed and narrowed their differences. Three kings have made agreements in this place. King of Gojam, King Minilik and Emperor Johannes have sat behind their issues, which were basically territorial claims. Following that, the church is called Peace Church. Warailu elderly Getachomulu recounted the stories of Adwa. He listened in his upbringing. Having a grandfather who fought in Adwa war, Getacho says Adwa has brought Ethiopians together more than ever. People from all parts of the country, Arsi, Bali, Sidama, Wolega, and others gathered here to march against colonialists. So this place is where Ethiopian unity incepted. The elderly accordingly hoped this sense of togetherness to pass to posterity. Ethiopians changed their plow tools to weapon in times of war and use it back to farming in times of peace. Our love, unity and mutual understanding are ancient. Warailu, which conceived Adwa victory, however, needs better attention to celebrate the victory more lively and attract tourists. This remarkable history of all Ethiopians remains eternal. People EBC approach said the Grand Renaissance Dam project has created the weekend spirit among Ethiopians like the victory of Ada registered 122 years ago. The 122nd anniversary of Adwa victory is to be officially marked on Friday at national level. Kifleya Susabebe has more. Ethiopia's victory over Italian colonial army 122 years ago is said to have proved the possibility of defeating colonialists by subject people worldwide. As they fight colonialists back in the days, Ethiopians are now battling to eradicate poverty by implementing colossal development projects like the Renaissance Dam. The Battle of Adwa was fought for national unity and to save Ethiopia from invasion. Grand Renaissance Dam construction is also about to do our way with poverty and maintain national pride. When Minilik called on Ethiopians for the battle, they marched to Adwa, putting aside their differences. Likewise, when Malesianawi laid the foundation stone to the Grand Dam and made a public call, all Ethiopians have responded favorably to execute the project. 
ዘር ሃይማኖት ሳይለይ ነው ማለት The Adwa victory was mainly won through the unity of Ethiopians regardless of ethnic or religious differences similarly all Ethiopians are now keen on completing the Grand Dam construction being fruits of unity makes Adwa victory and the Grand Dam project the same You see a similarity between Adwa victory and Grand Dam construction as both united and moved Ethiopians for common dream of The dam project has brought optimism of development for us and our children however our children need to have a better developed nation The youth also have unwavering love to their country They should have a firm stand on their country's unity as that leads to development. They have to prioritize development and national coexistence. To date, 64% of Grand Dam construction is completed. The Ministry of Defense announced a 21-gun salute at dawn, 6 a.m. local time on Friday, to commemorate Adwa victory. The 122nd anniversary of Adwa victory is colorfully celebrated all over the country. The Ministry of Culture and Tourism unveiled a 260 million bar project aimed at making the chain of mountains where the Battle of Adwa took place a tourist attraction site. Our reporter Abraham Masrat is on the phone from Adwa town to share us some information. Abraham, tell us about the project and what unique things you've observed during your stay. Abraham? Hello, Abraham. Would you tell us about the project? Overall, thing about the project is uh, creating job opportunities. They're making the town somehow appealing for the tourists that are coming to the town of Padua. Uh, it can be in relation with celebrating the victory of Padua or for any other businesses. So, in relation with it, there are amphitheaters that are to be built in here, and other things like, for example, lodge are to be built in here. Mind you, this project is not in any way related to Adwa Pan African University for whose, whose construction 200 million was, was started actually recently. So this is one of the things that, uh, that, has, been, that has taken place in here. Uh, and a reason was conducted actually to the mountains, this historical mountain. And the other thing that I witnessed there actually is that I uh, had the chance to be part of it the journey, the fifth journey to Adwa who arrived at Adwa town here today. This journey by about 25 young people from Adding, on foot all the way to Adwa. It's around 1,000 kilometers, more than 1,000 kilometers. They made it safely to Adwa today, so I had an afternoon to spend with them. What I witnessed, uh, asking them, talking to them about it, is uh, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of determination to make it all the way to here on foot with a lot of difficulties on the road. The road, the terrain is not that appealing terrain. Uh, it is most, mostly mountain and terrain, too. So, Conquering all this terrain, they made it to Adwa, and I was asking them why and what the objective of their journey to hear from Addis is. And they've been telling me that they want to commemorate, they want to actually relieve and know what has happened before 122 years ago in Ethiopia. And on the way, they told me that. They were reading about Ethiopian history. They had loads, loads of books, so they were reading about Ethiopian history, okay. reading about the politics right, of Ethiopia, Pakistan, the diplomacy of Ethiopia, Pakistan, and about the battle itself, uh, particularly uh, the Treaty of Bujali and other things. Let so me interrupt you I had the that. time with them, and their motives, their morals, their determination was somehow inspiring.
We are on the eve of the celebration of Adu, the victory of Adua in here, and tomorrow the whole celebration will be celebrated. Uh, actually, celebrated colorfully today in the evening here in the evening on the streets of Adua, candle okay. lighting programs okay, happening Abraham. all over. You go, you listen to music and other things, and it's very colorful in here. And for the other thing, uh, I like to invite our viewers for tomorrow's program, to tune into tomorrow's program, and this is all I have for now. Okay, thank you very much, Abraham. We'll be, get, we'll, we'll be in touch and getting more updates from you. <laughs> The significance of Adwa to those who were oppressed by the uh, oppressive uh, economic and as well as political oppressive situations of imperialism at that time because Adwa happened during the scramble for Africa. Um, I feel in many Ethiopians a very strong sense of self um, and I'm assuming that that's steeped in their history that they have a sense of themselves, that they have a sense of being victors um, they know that they've come from a long line of self-rulers, of kings, of queens, of people who have uh, defeated enemies and sustained a country. The Sudanese people danced all night in glory, uh, in congratulations to Ethiop for Ethiopians having defeated it the Italians. And so many Africans uh, from the ha Haiti, Jamaica, Europe, all the way to Iran and Iraq, women had fans with a Minilix picture on it. That shows you. You're watching ABC News. Ethiopian Airlines, in collaboration with Microsoft Company, launches a new apprenticeship factory in Addis Ababa on Thursday. The app factory trains young ICT graduates and enables them to become software engineers at the airline and its affiliates in Africa. Dewabu Yudao has attended the event. The newly launched app factory is meant to be a response for the fast-growing technology in every industry, including the airline business in Africa. Africa's largest aviation group, Ethiopian Airlines, in partnership with Microsoft for Africa, starts on the program with the aim of availing a more personalized flying experience for customers. The current software development capacity in the airline is said minimal, considering the country's potential. Today, when we talk about software, uh, development here at Ethiopian Aviation Academy, it looks like a wishful thinking. But with the hundreds of thousands of graduates every year from more than 40 universities in the country, this is a very, very small task. We can do much better than that. Apprentices at the App Factory will spend up to six months working on real-world software solutions and will have access to jobs at the airline. So on the sixth month program, the teaching, uh, the consultation and facilitation will be done by Microsoft. So it, it gives us uh, an opportunity to teach the university graduates in six months a very practical one so that they will be very productive. Microsoft has so far established 14 similar app factories across Africa in countries like Egypt, Nigeria, South Africa and Kenya. The program has improved the employability of ICT graduates in those nations, equipping them with high-level skills at the global level. Uh, we've been around uh, as a company for a number of years, uh, close to 25 years across Africa now. And uh, we have a number of programs, including a volunteering program, whereby we bring um, Microsoft employees to come and work on site and really do the hands-on delivery of programs, trainings, etc. And so the insight that you can bring and that you can leverage from such a big task force is really an opportunity for us to be able to contribute and have a meaningful partnership with Ethiopian Airlines. She added the alliance between Ethiopian Airlines and Microsoft goes beyond the new app factory. Other company assisted Ethiopian with the creation of an Android and iOS mobile applications. The new app factory, the second in Ethiopia next to Microsoft Healthcare platform, set up last year at Wollo University. An Ethiopian is recycling plastic bottles to make houses. 
His pilot project is a seven-room structure built on a farm outside Addis Ababa. The innovator says his plastic house is just as stable as one built with traditional materials such as bricks. Shifara Ulako presents the story by CGTN. The population growth in Ethiopia, so does the demand for housing. According to private real estate developers, many Ethiopians cannot still afford to own homes because the high cost of construction translates to expensive property. Anybody who comes up with an idea of how to reduce the cost and really deliver homes in a fast way has ample market here. An Ethiopian says he's ready to take advantage of this gap by presenting to the market a house that can be completed within three weeks using recycled plastic waste bottles. I just read one article which was uh, written uh, in India uh, that uses uh, these plastic waste plastic bottles for uh, building houses. So, you know, I found... I found the core point whereby, you know, the intersection point whereby, you know, the housing problem can be solved. At the same time, you know, the um, waste uh, can be uh, reused again and uh, can add value to the society. With 61,000 waste plastic bottles, he was able to construct a model seven-roomed house on his farm in Addis Ababa. According to him, the compact soil stuffed in the bottles makes the house resistant to strong wind and earthquakes, as well as fire spread and bulletproof. In this whole process, no steel has been used in the production process. No stone has been used. Uh, so all what we used were, were uh, waste plastic bottles, uh, soil, sand and cement. Uh, in fact, uh, we have used nylon rope. To tie the bottles. According to him, building these types of houses cost 70% less than a conventional building. He hopes that the government will adopt his simple technology to build schools and hospitals. That's all we had for now. I'm Tabitha John. Thank you for watching. Have a good time and enjoy the rest of our programs.